terms of the process, ideally you would be there from the start and you'd be sitting down with them and figuring out in pre-production what the story was that they were trying to tell and trying to work out ways that you might encode that information in a series of actions that a player could take. Um, and you'd come up with some sort of pre-designed document that would be about, well, so these are the, the sort of the key player actions that they're able to do. Um, then you would want to work with in production because obviously the story would evolve as it was going along in terms of what they were actually trying to communicate. Um, and you would refine the the narrative elements um, or refine the actions in the player as those narrative elements were being refined by the documentary. Um, and hopefully you'd also enter like a game production phase there where you would be implementing these things and trying these things out. Uh, by the time you hit sort of post-production, um, hopefully most of the game would be there and you would just be polishing or bringing in contractors to generate the R assets if you needed them or whatever. So it really you should be there for the whole the whole process, but it varies from project to project. Some game components of a documentary are likely to be very systemic, so you sort of know roughly what the systems are going in. You The documentary is just exploring them, but you sort of know what they are, so you're just designing a system there. Like Global Warming, you can go off and find out all the rules um, or the mathematical models and then build a game around that. If it's more of a narrative um, documentary, you're sort of trying to hone in on what is the player's story, what is an individual story, what might be a representative story and what might the branches be. So you're probably going to get more into the research side of things in those early stages so you can pull out the parts of individual stories that would look like branches in a game narrative. Um, but really it's it's like making a documentary or like making a film, like how long do those things take? They take as long as they need to take and it's the same with the game. It sort of takes as long as it needs to take. You should be bringing in a game developer designer as early as you can because there are big differences between how uh, traditional kind of linear documentary filmmaking or, or documentary storytelling works versus um, what a game and how a game works. Games are all about repeated actions and learning um, from those actions, whereas documentaries can obviously um, change and, and you, you're, you know your third act of the story that you're telling might be completely different in terms of what the characters are doing but a game needs to offer you the ability to to learn and evolve and repeat the same things and that goes from that also impacts the, the production process as well you don't want to build a game where the first two thirds of it are completely different from the last third because suddenly you have to build all of this extra content so really you should be talking to games people as early as you can In the initial stages they'd hire, they'd probably hire a designer or a games producer, someone who would be across all of the technical and artistic and design requirements and then they'd work together to sort of hammer out the rough shape of the game. Um, and then based on that information they would probably hire some other people. So a designer would be person responsible for coming up with the rules and the systems and, and they might also need a narrative designer who's responsible for coming up with a story that connects to those systems and making sure that if it's a game that has a lot of branching story elements, like they would design those things and how those things fit together. Then from that, they're probably hiring programmers and technical designers to, to actually code that stuff up and you'd want people who had an understanding of the technical challenges and also would hopefully connect with the producers to work out how much money there was and how complex technically it might be. So you might just be designing a website or you might be designing a, a game in an actual game engine. Um, and then on top of that you'd be hiring artists who would actually be creating the RSS that the, the player would be interacting with. Um, but in the first instance you'd be hiring a designer or a producer or a designer who's kind of got a crossover skill set there as well, but someone who can basically come in and do a rough sort of design document for it. You know, this is what we expect the mechanics to be, this is what we expect to have to build in terms of art, and this is kind of the rough idea of what we expect with the code. In games, a producer is effectively a project manager. Um, so in film, they would probably be like a line producer, effectively someone who manages the budget and the schedule. Um, whereas a producer in film would be someone who um, is kind of responsible for driving the project and, and is kind of the carrier of the creative vision. Um, game, so there is this sort of disconnect in language. Um, and so part of the conversation initially is 
people being clear about what their skill sets are and people being clear about what skill sets they think they will need and skill sets they can bring to the table. So, I mean, a designer might be someone who has production skills as well, but they might describe themselves as a game designer um, because they're far, their main skill set sort of lies in the creation of systems and, and that sort of thing. Um, whereas a producer might just be someone who would hire in a designer. They might have some design skills, but it might not be the thing that they're bringing to the table necessarily for this. So it's just about finding that individual common ground with a person. If you see you want a games producer, it might not be exactly the same as what you have in your head. So I think the initial meeting just needs to be a, this is what we're looking for. Do you fit that criteria? If you don't, do we need to bring someone else in and sort of who can do all of the stuff that we're looking for? Or do we need to find like a timeshare agreement of someone who can manage the budget, of someone who can do the schedule and someone who can do some of the design work? So it's really just, yeah. I think that that common language will evolve um, as more and more people get into this. But right now, it just doesn't exist, I think, in the way that would be ideal. So it's just about having conversations like up front. And also I think because you have film people who are coming at it and they sort of have this sense of, this is how it's worked for centuries. And games people are coming along with it. This is how it's worked for about 30 years. Um, so there, there isn't that that crossover. And I think that also sometimes games people and film people can some, be at loggerheads because the the narrative and the systemic elements are frequently not, don't mesh sometimes. Um, again, it's just about having that dialogue. language and that's really that's really hard I think because a lot of I mean I've, I've seen a lot of sort of traditional linear storytellers really struggle with it and some of the ideas that they have about what will work um, and what has worked for them don't necessarily transfer into the game world. Films tend not to be about repeated action whereas games sort of need to be about repeated action um, and, and linear narrative you know you can do lots of very individual cases things which become very expensive in games because you have to build everything and if you're building something that only happens once that's kind of a false economy in games or it's you know a linear thing or a film you just capture it and it's there and it exists whereas a game you have to make it and you know if you have to sort of balance your budget and work it how do we create you know games literacy within documentary filmmakers like what is the process and, and how do we find a bridge in language between you know game design language and a filmic language or a documentary filmmaking language or a narrative language because there are overlaps but you know if I start talking about systems and mechanics that's perhaps not something that people know and when a filmmaker starts talking about acts and beats and scenes like that's perhaps not something that a designer knows um, and it's about finding that common ground I think and about educating you know both sides of that thing. And kind of have a person who understands both of those forms, like a person is effectively a bridge between them, who can sit down and say, what are you trying to achieve with this documentary? Like, what is the story you want to tell? And what do you want your audience to have at the end of it? And then to go away and say, okay, so this is our target audience. This is what the experience that we want them to have. This is the take home that we want them to have. These are the sorts of platform choices that we might make. And these are the sorts of things that an audience will get out of making those platform choices and the, the uses of technology. So again, it's about finding someone who can speak the same language as a documentary filmmaker and as, as a game designer, as a technology person as well. So you, it's they don't, they don't need to rush out and find out everything they possibly can about game development, just find someone who can act as a bridge between those two worlds.